Yo, what's going on? Mike from Mike Talk Sports. Ohio State University just kicked off their season yesterday against Indiana in a 23-3, a bit of an underwhelming victory. So in today's video, we are going to be analyzing the quarterback play of Kyle McCord, the starter of Ohio State, in order to determine how did he play in his first official start and what does this mean for Kyle McCord and OSU season as a whole. For a bit of context, Kyle McCord is 20 years old. He's a former five-star recruit from New Jersey, but he played high school football in Philadelphia and he was overall the 49th prospect in his graduating class and overall the eighth quarterback. While he did have some game time experience in 2021 and in 2022, yesterday against Indiana really was truly his first significant amount of college snaps. His official stat line yesterday was 20 for 33, 239 passing yards, zero passing touchdowns, and one interception. He also added two carries for eight yards on the ground. And overall, he did split some time with Devin Brown. Overall, though, he played the vast majority of the snaps at quarterback for OSU. To start this video off, I want to touch upon some positives I saw from Kyle McCord that could instill some positivity into Ohio State's season going forward, and then I am going to touch on the negatives as there were definitely more negatives than positives in this game for Kyle McCord, even though it was his first start and he does need a bit of a leash. I think he looked good with his anticipation, timing, overall confidence, and ball placement and accuracy over the middle of the field, especially when targeting Cade Stover, the starting tight end on Ohio State. He was a nice big body target out there. He was consistently getting open, and he has a very nice catch radius, and you could tell Kyle McCord was very confident in pulling the trigger to Cade Stover, as overall, he did have five catches for 98 yards, and in my opinion, the best throw of the day for Kyle McCord did come to Cade Stover on a nice seam route about 15 to 20 yards down the field. Not only that, but there were a couple dig routes over the middle of the field that Kyle McCord did look good in when targeting his big tight end. Who else? Julian Fleming also looked good in this game. He had six catches for 58 yards, but overall, of course, Kyle McCord really struggled to get Marvin Harrison Jr. going as he only had two catches for 18 yards. Now, he did get injured in this game and played the majority of this game banged up. Nonetheless, this connection looked very underwhelming. The first thing that really will stand out to you about this game for Ohio State, and specifically the performance of Kyle McCord, he's clearly the least physically talented quarterback to ever take a snap under Ryan Day during the Ryan Day era. This is something you don't need a significant amount of sample size to determine. It is pretty simple that he does not have the physical talent of Dwayne Haskins. He doesn't have the physical talent of Justin Fields or CJ Stroud. What do I mean by this? Just on the first couple of throws, you can clearly tell Kyle McCord does not have a strong arm. He clearly lacks the drive under the ball necessary not only to test tight man coverage in tight zone windows, but to throw on the boundaries and the sidelines of the field. He consistently, even on screen routes and even on checkdowns that were near the boundaries, he would almost ground ball the ball consistently in this game. Again, he just lacked the throw power necessary in the lower half drive in order to make some of the bigger throws he left on the table yesterday. Not only this, but he did lack the vision in the run game. There was that play. He was close to the goal line. He could have scored a touchdown on the run, but he really did lack that vision and acceleration and burst off the line of scrimmage. And overall, his legs seem as though they are below average, even at the college level. And it seems as though his arm talent just was not there yesterday. So Kyle McCord clearly will have to make up for his physical limitations with the mental aspect of the game. And this, of course, is yet to be seen, but he certainly did not instill confidence in Ryan Day or anyone watching in his mental processor. Now, I think a bit of a fault of this is Ryan Day really holding Kyle McCord's hand on every single play. He had very gimmicky play calls in plays where if the first read was not there, Kyle McCord straight up looked like he would panic. And when you watch Kyle McCord in yesterday's game, the eye manipulation was absolutely not there. The second the ball is snapped, he's staring down his first read. And again, if his first read wasn't there, he somewhat panics 
Hicks, a good example of this, is on his sole interception when he had a bootleg, and on the bootleg, his main target was the flat. He was a tight end slash fullback coming out of the backfield. The tight end slash fullback coming out of the backfield got blown up, so Kyle McCord kind of panicked on the play and threw into double coverage. Now, I do like one of the aspects of his mental game that he did show yesterday, and that was his pocket presence. I thought for the most part in this game, he did stay tall. He took some tough hits, and again, overall, his pocket presence did not look bad. Was he necessarily extending the play to a significant degree within the pocket? No, he wasn't, but overall, he really was not bailing from clean pockets, and I thought he was not holding onto the ball for too long. Now, what does this mean for OSU going forward? Well, clearly, they do not have as good of a quarterback under center as they've had over the past couple of years, and of course, over the past couple of years, not only have they failed to win a national championship, but they've also suffered some heartbreaking losses to Michigan. So in order to not only beat Michigan this year and to potentially win a national championship, you're going to need your defense to step up and you're going to need your run game to step up. You're going to need a significantly better performance from guys like Trevion Henderson. He straight up just did not look good with his vision yesterday. When the hole was wide open, the physical talent was absolutely there, but 12 carries on 49 yards absolutely will not cut it from him. And considering OSU is having some very favorable matchups before their Notre Dame game. What I really want to see from Kyle McCord and more specifically Ryan Day dial up some traditional passing sets, some traditional passing sets from the shotgun where he has a lot of time to throw the ball and he can cleanly go through his progressions. I hate how Ryan Day really holds the hands of all of his quarterbacks and does not let them go off of their first or second read. I want Kyle McCord to be confident out there and not get a bunch of play action boots where it is very significantly designed by the coach. I want to see him with some more open-ended reads where Kyle McCord can really let it rip and have some confidence in his mental and physical processor. If I had to give my official prediction, I think Kyle McCord has a solid year for OSU, but I do think OSU fails to capture this incredible season with a championship at the end. I just don't think the roster is good enough to make up for the lack of quarterback play that Kyle McCord will deliver. If this very similar roster couldn't win with CJ Stroud last year, I just don't see it being the case with Kyle McCord this year. I hate to say it, but I do think over the next couple of games, Kyle McCord will show some more confidence out there and he will look better than he did in his first start. He's still very young and he still does need a long leash. Thanks for listening to today's video of Mike Talk Sports. Let me know in the comment section below, do you agree with my analysis on Ohio State and Kyle McCord? Let me know in the comment section below, what are your thoughts on Kyle McCord? Thanks for listening, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, smack that like and hit subscribe.